One of the fascinating things about Shylock, about the way Shakespeare has given us Shylock, is there's only five scenes in which Shylock appears. There's the first scene with Antonio, where he is the moneylender, where he um, tries to get the best deal he can, where he, as I, I'm beginning to believe, makes a pitch for acceptance uh, in the society. Um, then there's a scene at home with his daughter. The only time you see the two of them together, the only time you see Shylock within his own space, his own private space. Then there's the, the scene where he confronts the people he thinks are responsible for his daughter running away and learns from Tubal that his daughter has sold, has traded his beloved dead wife's gift, this turquoise ring, for a monkey uh, and, and is driven by Tubal to uh, a, a frenzy of revenge. Then we have a, a, a scene in which he is, a very short scene in which he's um, insisting that Antonio be taken back into jail and will not listen to him and insist I will have my body. And then we have the trial scene. So there's five very different scenes showing five entirely different facets of Shylock's character. And the, the scene at home, the scene with Jessica, is uh, it, it's a really, really rich scene um, because there are there are two things happening that Shylock is aware of and a third thing that he's not aware of. The two things that are happening that he is aware of are number one, he's losing a third of his household. Um, Gabo, Lancelot Gabo, the servant who I think Shylock is kind of fond of. Um, the one who kind of keeps his daughter on an even keel is a real companion to Jessica. He has to be, Shylock has to be aware of the fact that Jessica and Lancelot have a good relationship. Um, that's being broken up. Lancelot is leaving. His home is going to be transformed in some way from what it has been. And the second thing that's happening in that scene that Shylock is aware of is that he is going to have dinner with the Christians. Um, he feels tremendously ambivalent about that. In the first scene, he says, uh, oh, to go have dinner, to smell of pork, to eat of the habitation uh, which your prophet the Nazarite conjured the devil into. I will buy with you, sell with you, talk with you, walk with you, and so following, but I will not eat with you, drink with you, nor pray with you. And yet, he goes back on that. He agrees to go to dinner. Because I think there's this feeling of, despite himself, of this is a step. This is a step toward assimilation. This is a step toward, he says, he excuses it by saying, yeah, I'm going to go and help him waste his money. I'm going to feed off the prodigal Christian. This is a way that I can, you know, uh, get back at him. That's, that's sheer defensiveness, I think. He's going because he wants a good outcome from it. Um, one of the things that incenses him in the aftermath is that it's during the time he's at that dinner party that his daughter elopes. And he completely attributes complicity to Bassanio and Antonio and Gratiano and Salanio and Salario and, you know. But in the scene in his home with Jessica, he's going to go to dinner with these people. And, the, and, and Lancelot, he's, he, Lancelot is leaving him because he's been offered a job with Bassanio. And he's gotten the job with Bassanio because Shylock has recommended him. Shylock has said to Bassanio, I have somebody working for me who wants to work for you. He's a good person. You would do well to hire him. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Has to be because he knows Lancelot Gobbo wants this job and 
he likes Lancelot, so he'll help him get this job. The only time he could have done that was at the notaries. He didn't do it in the first scene. Then he goes home to get the money and meets them at the notaries, and that's the last time he sees Bassanio. So it has to be at the notary as he's getting this thing that he says, by the way, I'd love to do an improv of that scene. That argues to me that he's a feeling man, that he's a, that he's a, a person who wants to do the right thing even if it means disrupting his household. He says that Lancelot you know, is a, a huge feeder and you know, sleeps more by day than the, you know, the, the leopard or the cat or something like that. Those are all excuses, I think. You know. um, what he, so those are the two things that he's aware of in that. So the thing he's not aware of in that scene is that Jessica's planning to elope and take all his money. And the new information that comes in that scene is that there are going to be masks that night. And um, Emily, uh, Sophia Knapp, and I have chatted about this scene because she's playing Jessica. What there is behind this, this antipathy that Shylock has to the idea of masks um, and how he, his, his, uh, Demeanor, the way he speaks to Jessica from before he hears about the mask and then after he hears about it, is, is radically different. Um, he, he becomes irate. He, he becomes steamed. And, um, you know, I've seen uh, Trevor Nunn's film of it when Henry Goodman played uh, Shylock, and he slaps Jessica in his response about the, uh, and, and I said, oh, that's, that's kind of neat, you know, that happens, that he has. And um, Emily's response was, I just, I hate to think that there's an abusive relationship here because she says, I think in the fifth act, Jessica's really regretting, you know, uh, having, having left. And um, I, I don't want to be, for Jessica, when she thinks back to her time with Shylock, to think back on an abusive relationship. And I think there's a lot of validity in that. Um, but so much of uh, how you play a moment like that has to do with what the backstory is, you know. And, and, and for me, uh, you know, the whole idea of Jessica being a reincarnation of Leia. A, uh, someone who looks like Leia, perhaps Leia, when did Leia die? Could it have been in childbirth? Uh, could, could the loss of Leia and um, the, the Jessica becoming part of my life somehow be tied up with masks? You know, there's, there's all sorts of uh, backstories that can inform how that moment, learning about the mask, gets, gets played. The fact is that Shylock detests music. He talks about hearing the bagpipe and being unable to contain his urine. Um, he, uh, the wry neck, the, the squealing of the wry necked fife and, and things. And that fifth act starts with Lorenzo and Jessica talking about music, the beauty of music. And, you know, Shylock is the person who can't abide music. Uh, his somber, sober, let not the sound of shallow foppery. So it probably did have to do with Leia, didn't it? Maybe, maybe that's one possibility. Yeah. But it's fascinating. It's a fascinating detail. Yeah.